Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Today, we're looking at Berlin, the Wicked City, unveiling the mythos in Weimar, Berlin um, by Chaosium Inc. Um, this is their latest source book based on the Call of Cthulhu games. And um, yeah, what, what did you think of this? <laughs> I thought this was a great book. I thought it was actually really fascinating, um, just from a historical perspective, even before they got to the mythos. It was really interesting to see about, you know, read about Berlin right after the, the First World War. Uh, what a wonderful, decadent city. Um, this, is, this is a large book. It's $45, and it's worth every, every penny. The amount of research they, they put into this book is, is really amazing. Um, it is. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I, when I interviewed one of the uh, uh, heads of Chaosium at uh, PAX Unplugged, uh, I saw their, their, the bunch of books they have on Call of Cthulhu. This book in particular, I don't know, it's something about the cover. It just, mm -hmm. I look at it and it just calls you. You see, you know, going through Barnes and Noble or a library or anything like that. Sometimes you look through books, something to read, and there's a cover, you see it and it just calls you. And I, I love the, the art and the style of this book. Uh, I, I love the, how it's designed. I, it's, 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 I really enjoyed this, so much of the, the, uh, what it gives you. It gives you atmosphere and it gives you a whole bunch of history. Oh, lots and lots of uh, less history and setting information. You know, you've got, you've got the his, history of the city. You've got the politics of the city. You've got the economics of the city which is really important, of course, because this is the, uh, the great political, I mean, the great economic crash. They've got a chart telling, uh, uh, showcasing the um, inflation of the mark. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, get, uh, you get law and order, you get fashion, you get architecture. They go into great detail about the different architectural schools. <laughs> um, yeah. And you get so much of the culture. There is just so much information here it really is amazing yeah yeah so to let our viewers know um so this takes place between i would say from the 1920s to maybe right before uh the nazis uh gained power in the late 30s. yeah right between the two wars they they were uh, they were such a powerful great nation you know they had the, one of the best militaries uh, ever in that time period and then they fought this war and they lost and they have all these uh uh, wounded veterans that have come back. Um, uh, the businesses aren't doing as well. Um, you have all these like uh, pockets around the city, and it's like they're trying to survive any way they can. And it's about, it seems like no matter how well uh, a section of the city is doing, like well economically, uh, there's always some sort of uh, darkness behind it, whether it be like they're doing something devious in the background, prostitution, drugs, or something like that. Yes, yes. Uh this is a just a fantastic, you know, microcosm of vice and decadence and desperation. Just the perfect breeding ground for uh, not only the the you know the mythos, but just sin. Uh, you could yeah. you could tell fascinating stories with just the first part of this book. You don't even have you don't yeah. even need the mythos. You could tell a great story about crime and proto Nazis and prostitution and drugs and just this crazy, crazy sort of decadence, you know, um, clubs um, full of just naked servers and, uh, you know, um, clubs that served just drugs instead of alcohol. And um, it, it really was, you know, just an amazing, you know, just an amazing story filled city. The first parts of the book, uh, like the first chapter, first few chapters deal with history. First, it gives an overall history of Germany and then goes into the history of Berlin. And then it goes into these, uh, I love that. I love that they, they actually get into the NPCs, well, real life figures <laughs> in, in Germany at that time, like, you know, like Albert Einstein and um, yep. uh, what he was doing there, uh, how long he was there for. Um, uh, so you have this chance to interact with a lot of uh, great figures and it gives you the information of how to do so and, and, and what they were doing and how, how you can link that to your campaigns. And then the rest of it starts going toward uh, the mystical side of things. Yeah, after you get a good setting, um, a good grounding in the actual 
um, Berlin. They start slowly creeping in the mythos. The, the, the wonderful thing about the mythos is that it can so easily invade and corrupt anything else. I've heard someone once refer to it as the, the cuckoo mythos because you can just <laughs> slip it into any other um, any other culture, any other religion. There's always room for the corrupting influence of the mythos to just slide right in there and start working on it. And that's what they do. They just kind of work that in. And there was so much, there was so much um, occultism um, in Berlin anyway hmm. that, uh, you know, they detail, they detail a whole handful, you know, of, um, of different occult groups that you can, your, your investigators can belong to. Um, and, you know, they detail which ones of them have actually touched the mythos and which are just skirting around the edges. It, it's, it's just a, the whole setting was tailor-made for the mythos. It was, it was a time of clubs. Everybody was in a political party or, um, you know, there were lots and lots of occult clubs. Um, you know, Aleister Crowley, the great beast himself, was, uh, was living in Berlin at this time. So he's actually in mm. one of the settings. You can have dinner with him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. great. So the the last parts of the book, uh, I think the last three chapters start giving you, they give you, uh, well, they give you seeds of mm -hmm. four adventures as well. Um, but they also, yep. there's the one grand adventure at the end as well for uh, keepers that they could, they could run as well. Yeah, there um, are th three very detailed scenarios and you, you can mm -hmm. tie them together, but you could also play them individually. And uh, they they are really detailed. I mean, they could have been, published as scenarios on their own um they there is a there's 20 plus pages of handouts at the back of this book <laughs> hmm. which which is a lot of maps and and uh <clears throat> a lot of maps and newspaper clippings and photographs just really really detailed stuff it was great now uh as now i've I've never played Call of Cthulhu as a as a keeper or a run run a game like that. But I know you have, Matt. Um, I have. Uh, yes. Do you, Do you feel that there's there's a lot of Do you feel that Would you feel comfortable running this game? Do you feel like there's enough there for you to feel um, uh, to run a setting like this? Oh, oh, definitely, definitely. There, there's a much information. There's almost too much information because you'd have to pare some of it down, or you'd just be overwhelmed by it. Um, mm. You know, I'm, I'm always I'm always a little hesitant uh, to run historical games in places that I'm not really familiar with, just because I'm worried that one of my players will say, "No, oh, that's not right. There. That wasn't invented until to you know 1932." I'm like, oh, no. But yeah. um, this book gives me so much information that uh, you know I would have to read this book a couple more times, but once I fully digested it, I think I could, I'm sure I could easily run a game um, in, in Berlin. And these settings are so detailed. There's so much information that I could definitely run these scenarios. And um, <clears throat> I would really like to, actually. I would really like to run some of these. They're a lot of fun. They look really good. Um, they, they're... <laughs> They're they're uh, they're pretty descriptive. Uh, some of them, you know, the first scenario is um, based loosely on historical events of a um, a cannibalistic serial killer in Berlin, um, hmm. and of course, they um, uh, th there were lots of rumors swirling around, and so they take all those rumors as true and make it more sensational even than it was. But uh, it's, it's, you know, it can be pretty horrific. Um, and then the other scenarios, you know, there's lots of prostitution and sex magic. Um, but, you know, Chaosium is a, uh, is, you know, a really responsible company. They're all very upfront about what sort of things are in the scenario. And um, they talk about how to scale it for your group. 
and in the scenarios as written, they kind of go with the uh, you know fade to black uh, technique, you know, where mm. something really, and then something terrible happens, <laughs> and and then they kind of you know draw the curtain over the scene. Uh, but of course, as a keeper, and you know, if your players want to, you can really get, you know, really, really descriptive about it because it's all there. It's some really horrible stuff, but uh, really good stuff. Yeah, you know, really good stuff. Um, the second scenario has uh, somebody summoning the wrong god, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and that goes about as well as you'd expect. Um, and then the uh, third scenario has the uh, investigators pitted against a coven of witches, which is fantastic, um, along with a um, uh, a cinema, you know, an old movie, um, which is kind of like uh, kind of like the King in Yellow. Kind of, you know, if people watch the movie, they'll be driven insane. So, hmm. a lot of lot of great things in there. I I was very mm-hmm. impressed with it. I'm very impressed. Right. I think that uh, any any keeper that's um, you know interested in um, in the setting um, or is looking for a, a setting of wild um, decadence uh, could could learn a lot from this book. Even if you didn't set it in Berlin, you could use this sort of information to your, you know, import it into your own setting. Um, one thing they they um, they mentioned characters from berlin you know german characters and they they mentioned things like uh you know setting up a background um how the great war inter- interact um impacted your character i i gotta say that if i was running this i think i might be more inclined to have my players not be germans so that hmm. when they came to the setting they were as surprised and shocked by it as the players will be. <laughs> so they're not used I, to I it. I think that's good. I think that's yeah. actually a really good idea because it, it, I think one thing that I would struggle with is if I uh, try to do, I, I would struggle to make sure that the, that the culture of this time is, that is enacted properly. And I think if the characters try to be, come from that area, it might be difficult for them. That might be too much acting for them to do or, or too right, much right. Uh, role playing. You know, um, but if they were like Londoners or um, Americans, even better, you know, maybe come yeah. to check out the film industry over here, uh, over in Germany, uh, that might be a lot more, a lot more uh, fun to do. Yeah, I think that's the way I would go with it. But either way, either, either way would work, I think. A really good. Point. All right, excellent. So what would you rate this book? Oh, dear. Uh, if I was going to give this a wisdom score, I would say zero. It's totally insane. No, I, I would give this. <laughs> I would give this a wisdom score of eighteen. Really, this is a just just a perfect book uh, for its setting. Um, yeah, there's just so much information in there. It's it's completely worth your forty five dollars or your two million marks, however you get. <laughs> So definitely, if you're a Call of Cthulhu player, check out Berlin. <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> yes, let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe. And um, be we'll safe We'll see you next there. time. Yeah. <laughs>